look what brave little mouse has come crawling into my den. An impressive feat, I must say. At least, for a mortal. Why, it's not every day that you see someone such as yourself walk so brazenly into hell. The confidence on your face. <laughs> it's something to be admired. But what else should I expect? After all, it takes a certain kind of braveness or stupidity to make a deal with one such as I. To make a deal with a devil. Welcome to my palau, brave mouse. It is a pleasure to make your accommodation once again. How might I be of assistance? Actually, before we get started on the nitty-gritty of your reasons for coming here, allow me to alter our surroundings slightly. Make them a bit more... relaxed. Comfortable, even. It's ever so important to me that my clients enjoy the time they spend here. And you are no different. Even though I doubt what I'll be discussing will be particularly pleasant. There. Gone is my office. Replaced instead by a banquet of tasty food and delightful beverages. Indulge yourself. Because depending on what you say to me, little mouse, it very well may be the last feast you enjoy. In a very, very long time. <laughs> While you do that, I just need to attend to something. <clears throat> Sheila, could you please rearrange my schedule for the next few hours? I expect I'm going to be a little... busy. <laughs> Oh, my warlock is already waiting in the lobby. Well, tell him he'll have to come back later. After all, I could take away the powers I grant him with the flick of a finger. And I sincerely doubt he'd want that. Would he? <laughs> no. No, he wouldn't. Thank you. A thousand pardons for that, my friend. I'm ever so busy... Being a devil is a rigorous job, even on the quiet days. So many people, both mortals and immortals alike, want something from you. It's positively infuriating sometimes. People pestering me, asking me for things, trying to strike a deal or escape it. It never actually happens. My contracts are ironclad. Escape-proof. There's not a single loophole in their terms. I promise you. But still, they try. The fools. They always think they can outwit me. When they most decidedly cannot. But enough ranting and moaning about me. That's not what you're here for. You're here on business, my friend. With purpose. But whatever for? You wish to escape your contract. Of course. Of course. Why else would you be here? I suppose there was always the chance you'd want to create another one. But there isn't particularly much else you can offer me. I already have dominion over your soul. And there isn't much else about you that intrigues me. Your talents, your skills, all irrelevant to one such as I. All that mattered was what makes you, you. And I already have that. Don't I? Forgive me. 
I signed so many contracts daily, I've actually forgotten. What did you sell your immortal soul for again? Ah, uh, yes. You wanted to be a successful writer. I remember now, watching you day in, day out at that computer. Tip-tap typing away at that keyboard, spurting out words, crafting sentences, and forming stories all in the hope that you might one day make it big. That you might one day have people acknowledge your talent. That you might one day get published. And have you not? Have you not succeeded in what you set out to do? Have I not fulfilled what I promised? You are a successful writer. Though, I suppose in a way, you already were. For anyone who enjoys what it is they're doing is a success in one form or another. Sure, you could have waited. You could have bided your time like everyone else, just played the game and mastered your talent in the hopes of someone noticing. But you didn't. You came to me and took a shortcut. And now, you're trying to escape the consequences of it. But really, you should have been more specific about what kind of successful writer you wanted to be. Or... Perhaps you should have read your contract a bit more closely before you signed that dotted line. You could have mentioned that you focus on novels, or that you have a dynamite spec script for a screenplay. Perhaps you try your hand at erotica, or dabble in science fiction. But no, you kept it vague, like all my collected souls do. You didn't think you were wording through. And because of that, you left my options wonderfully open. Something I can't thank you enough for. I mean, so what if your successful writing field isn't what you intended when you made the deal? It's still a successful career, is it not? Remind me, what was it again? Ah, yes. ASMR scripts. I see you have a lot of fills. More than a few upvotes on those, too. I'd be jealous if I cared about that sort of thing. You have hundreds of very talented voice actors filling each one of your stories and waiting for more. So what appears to be the problem? Is it... The medium? Or the lack of fame? Because really, my friend, if fame is all that you care about rather than the joy of writing itself, perhaps that was your problem to begin with? You took your love of your art for granted, wishing instead to make a profit, when really you should have appreciated what you had, and viewed any fame you got from it as a side bonus. But that's just my two cents. I'm not judging. I've seen far worse cases than you. Why, you're barely a drop in the bucket when it comes to the depraved selfishness I've seen from you mortals. Why, you need only merely look around the halls of my home and you'll see the millions of wretched souls I've laid claim to over the centuries. All of them screaming, begging for an escape from the torment that they'll never find. Each one expanding my domain and my reputation amongst my peers, increasing my power one contract at a time. No doubt you already saw the future that lies in store for you when you entered this place. A matter I am certainly intent on rectifying, by the way. 
I'm not entirely happy with how you managed to enter this place uninvited. Even if our encounter has certainly proved amazing thus far, I'm quite intent on discovering your method of intrusion before you leave. Ah, were you expecting me to say that you won't be leaving? <laughs> oh no, no, little mouse. You still have many years of whatever it is you mortals do before you enter my home for the next infinitude. Because in case that thick head of yours needs to be told, I won't be amending our deal. I have stuck to my terms exactly as they were laid out. But you haven't, mortal. Allow me to enlighten you to the folly of your ways. Clause F. Section 6, Paragraph 6. Client will not into the home of the contractor unless otherwise invited. Doing so will result in one of several punishments listed below. Those punishments... Let's look at them, shall we? Permanent blindness, loss of limbs, deafness, muteness, incognito, <laughs> that's a fun one, or something ironic. Yes, I almost always choose the ironic option. It always works so wonderfully. It never fails to put a smile on my face. <laughs> so, you may return to your realm, mortal. I've grown a bit tired of looking at you. Yes, return to your realm, to your friends and family. Your pathetic little life. And when you try to put a pen to paper, you'll find it a mite more difficult than you did before. The ideas, the stories, the words, they'll still come to you. But you won't know what to do with them. You won't know how to lay them out. They'll never quite feel right. And while your career will still flourish, you'll never be able to enjoy the art that you took so decidedly for granted. So, I hope coming here and trying to weasel your way out of the consequences was worth it, little mouse. I hope that the next few decades of creative bankruptcy were what you desired, because that's what you got out of this little visit, my friend. And that's what you get when you deal with the devil. <laughs> uh -huh. My, how desperately the mouse struggles to escape its trap. So anxious, so petrified in the face of its future that it would do anything to escape the approaching doom. You wish to make a bargain with me? So be it, little mouse. I see no harm in it, as long as you see no harm in me watching you twist and turn in the wind, trying to escape the fate I've weaved for you. But I want you to know that your boldness, your refusal to meet your fate, isn't necessarily a boon, my dear. Should you fail to convince me of, well, whatever it is that you intend to convince me of, then not only will I not allow you to do what you seek, but down will come the claws, and you won't like that. Though I suspect you already know that. Yes, I assumed as much. An offer is all that you have left now. But what exactly do you have to give me? As I said before, I don't care for your talents. I don't care much for your personality either. All I have ever wanted from you 
was that priceless soul of yours, and I already have that. Bound in the ink you signed on the dotted line of your contract. So why would I ever accept an offer from you? Hmm. Now that is intriguing. But what could you possibly offer me that no one else among the denizens of hell has? Consider me intrigued, little mouse. But know that if this is a trick of some kind, a trick that will almost certainly fail, mind you, then the fate I previously bestowed upon you will seem kind when compared to the one that is to come. Now, tell me what you're offering. Indulge me. <laughs> <laughs> Why, of all the souls I've conquered, of all the weasels that have tried to back out of their contracts, in all of their millions, I have never once heard one of them offer me that. To offer me themselves in service. Perhaps none of them thought to give it? Or perhaps they were too afraid to wager it. But writing an art in itself takes a certain amount of bravery, doesn't it? To share something personal you created with the rest of the world requires a certain confidence that not many possess. Well done. You are correct, of course. None of the other lords of hell have their own personal writer. Not one with free will, at least. No, there are many writers in the pits of hell. But with their souls gone, you'll often find that the magic that once flowed from their fingertips is gone as well. It's not something that they care too much for. See, the other lords lack my grace, my charisma. They don't care for elegance or refinement. Now, I might have said before that I didn't care for your talents, and I still don't. But with a real writer at my side, a real wordsmith at my beck and call, prepared to write whatever contract or document I ask of them, my dealings will be ironclad. Foolproof. And, while that may not sound too impressive to your ears, human, in hell, even the slightest advantage, the slightest means of standing out, can mean much for one's reputation. Plus, if word gets out that I amended my deal, slightly, with the one who tried to weasel their way out of the contract, it might mean more people are willing to try and do the same. They might think of me as gullible, which will in turn mean more and more contracts created by fools believing that they stand a chance at outwitting and deceiving the king of deceivers. Very well, mortal. I accept. As always... There are certain contractual stipulations. We can worry about the nitty-gritty details later, but I'll cover the main one now. You won't be allowed to return to your world. You understand that, yes? You will remain here, in my home, unless a day should arise. I need something of you. But I doubt that will ever happen. I have many far more capable servants than you, of course, and I'd hate for you to get the idea that you can escape. That would, of course, be a violation of your contract. Here and now, you'll find that you don't age as you once did, but you'll also find that the fate I inflicted upon you before, of never feeling satisfied with your writing 
hasn't taken effect. Down here, at least. You'll be praised for your talent, lauded by my fellow servants, and feel boundless satisfaction as you write. With purpose. And of course, if you cannot die of age, then that does decrease your chances of death, doesn't it? Which means that I can never claim your soul. By natural means, at least. A small price to pay for the thousands more this will help me attain. So, I suppose you, clever little mouse, that you've achieved in one way what you set out to do. You found a loophole. Perhaps not the way you imagined it, but a loophole nonetheless. Your soul is safe. You got what you wanted. I guess what they say is true, isn't it? Sometimes, it really is better to reign in hell than to serve in heaven. <laughs> Hello everyone, it's Prince Cairo, and I want to thank you all for listening to another one of my audios. If you enjoyed it, please tell me what your favorite part is, and tell me the type of ASMR you're interested in hearing in the future. Special thank you goes out to all of my patrons, especially that of my precious pets. Mystic37, Creek, Venon, Toka, T. Briscoe, Michelle, Nikki Pele, and Lindsay Travers. Thank you all so, so much for all of your support. It truly does mean the world to me, whether you're a patron or not. As always, if you want access to Not Safe for Work audios or audios early, check out the Patreon, and all of my other relevant links will be in my link tree down below. Thank you all so, so much. I've been Prince Cairo, and remember that your prince loves you all. Mwah.